Hello everyone. Welcome to Analog Communication Tutorials. In this video, I am going to discuss on the topic Frequency Modulated Signal Generation using Indirect Method. Before I begin the topic of this discussion, let me brief about the different methods of generating frequency modulated signals. There are essentially two basic methods for generating frequency modulated signals. The first one is called indirect method, where the modulating signal is first used to produce a narrow band frequency modulated signal, and then frequency multiplication is used to increase the frequency deviation to a desired level. This method, that is indirect method of FM signal generation, is the preferred choice for frequency modulation when the stability of the carrier frequency is of major concern. An example application for this would be commercial radio broadcasting. The second method is called the direct method in which the frequency of the carrier is directly varied in accordance with the input modulating signal which is readily accomplished using a voltage controlled oscillator. Coming to the topic of this discussion, which is indirect method of frequency generation, let us consider figure 1 here, which shows the block diagram of indirect method of generating a wideband frequency modulated signal. The system consists of an integrator, followed by a phase modulator, then a frequency multiplier, and lastly, a crystal oscillator. The crystal oscillator produces a carrier signal equal to AC cos 2 pi F1t. Please note the carrier frequency is F1. Coming to the input of the system, we have the message signal, which is the baseband signal, or also called as the modulating signal. This message signal is first integrated and then it is fed to a phase modulator. So, the output of the integrator would be integral 0 to t m of t dt. Coming to the phase modulator, it consists of a multiplier, then a adder, followed by a minus pi by 2 phase shifter. The input to the phase shifter is the carrier which is AC cos 2 pi F1t. And since it shifts the phase by minus pi by 2, the output of the phase shifter is AC sin 2 pi F1t. Now, the integrator output, which is integral 0 to t m of t dt, and the phase shifted version of the carrier, which is AC sin 2 pi F1t, are multiplied, and the output of this multiplier is integral 0 to t m of t into AC cos 2 pi F1t multiplied by dt. This product signal is fed to the adder and the other input to the adder is the crystal oscillator signal which is AC cos 2 pi F1t. It should be noted that the adder shown here basically performs a subtraction operation and therefore the output of the adder is given by AC cos 2 pi F1t minus of the output of the multiplier which is shown here. To minimize the distortion in the phase modulator, the maximum frequency deviation or the modulation index beta is considered lesser than 1. Therefore, the resulting signal which is S1 of t will be a narrow band frequency modulated signal. Lastly, the narrow band frequency modulated signal is multiplied in frequency by means of a frequency multiplier so as to produce a desired wide band signal which is denoted by S of t here. This is how a indirect frequency modulated signal generator works. Let us now discuss a little bit on the frequency multiplier. Figure 2 here shows the block diagram for a frequency multiplier. Now, if you look at the input of this, the input to the frequency multiplier is a frequency modulated signal S of t with a carrier frequency equal to Fc and modulation index equal to beta. This signal is fed to a memoryless nonlinear device. 
Now, when I say a memoryless non-linear device, it simply means that the device has no energy storage elements. Let the output of the memoryless non-linear device be denoted by V of t. This signal is then fed to a bandpass filter with a midband frequency equal to NFC. Therefore, the output of the bandpass filter will be a FM signal denoted by S dash of t with a carrier frequency equal to NFC and modulation index equal to N beta. So, in general sense, we can say the input to the frequency multiplier is a narrow band frequency modulated signal and the output of the frequency multiplier is a wide band frequency modulated signal. Coming back to the memoryless nonlinear device, we note that the input output relation of such a nonlinear device can be expressed in the form of S dash of t equals a1 into s of t plus a2 s square of t plus etc etc till a n into s to the power n of t where a1 a2 till a n they are the coefficients determined by the operating point of the nonlinear device and n itself is the highest order of nonlinearity let us now discuss the mathematical aspects of this particular system. Before we continue, I want you to note that I have previously discussed on single tone frequency modulation as well as narrow band frequency modulation systems. Those videos will be a prerequisite to this video. So I highly recommend you to watch those videos as well. You can watch those videos by clicking on the link shown in the top right corner right now or I will leave the link of those videos in the video description below. Coming back to this discussion, let us now consider the narrow band frequency modulated wave that is produced at the output of the phase shifter as S1 of t and S1 of t is given by A1 which is the amplitude of the carrier followed by cos 2 pi F1 t plus 2 pi K1 integral 0 to t m of t dt. It should be noted a1 is the carrier amplitude, f1 is the carrier frequency, k1 here is the modulation sensitivity and lastly m of t represents the modulating signal. Let us now consider a single tone modulating signal defined by m of t equals am cos 2 pi fmt. Let us now substitute this equation which is for m of t into our previous equation which is for narrow band frequency modulated signal. This substitution is shown here. So s1 of t equals a1 cos 2 pi f1 t plus 2 pi k1 integral. This complete term is m of t. In the next step here I have integrated cos 2 pi f m t which is equal to sin 2 pi fm t divided by 2 pi fm. 2 pi here and 2 pi here gets cancelled. So what remains in the next step is k1 am divided by fm followed by sin 2 pi fm t. Therefore, the final equation for narrow band frequency modulated signal would be s1 of t equals a1 cos 2 pi f1 t plus beta 1 sin 2 pi f m t where beta 1 is the modulation index for single tone modulation and it is supposed to be kept below 0 0.3 to minimize the distortion. So you should note that equation 4 here represents the narrow band frequency modulated signal. Coming back to the block diagram we have currently derived an expression for the narrow band frequency modulated signal which acts as an input to the frequency multiplier. This narrow band frequency modulated signal is then multiplied in frequency by using a frequency multiplier. This creates the desired form of wide band frequency modulated signal. Let us now write an expression for this WBFM signal, which is shown here. So, the WBFM signal, which is given by S of t, is equal to AC cos 2 pi 
please note n f1 of t because the input signal is now multiplied in frequency by a value of n plus 2 pi n k1 then integral 0 to t m of t dt. Let us now denote n into f1 which is this part as fc and n into k1 which is this part as kf. So, the WBFM signal changes to S of t equals AC into cos of 2 pi FCT plus 2 pi KF into integral 0 to t M of t dt. Please note this is again for wideband frequency modulated signal. Let me now once again substitute for M of t by AM cos 2 pi FMT. This is shown in this step here. So, S of t equals AC cos 2 pi FCT plus 2 pi KF followed by integral 0 to t AM into cos 2 pi FMT which is nothing but M of t. Once again, I am going to follow the same steps. Integration of cos 2 pi FMT is sin 2 pi FMT divided by 2 pi FM. 2 pi here and 2 pi here gets cancelled. So, it will be KF AM divided by FM followed by sin 2 pi FMT. So, the WBFM signal reduces to S of t equals AC cos 2 pi FCT plus beta into sin 2 pi FMT where beta is equal to n beta 1. First of all, you should note beta represents the modulation index. Further, we have specified beta 1 here beta 1 is the modulation index for narrow band frequency modulated signal. The equation 7 shown here is itself the desired form of frequency modulated signal generated by using indirect frequency modulation technique. Well, with that we come to the end of this discussion on indirect method of frequency modulated signal generation. If you found this video to be informative, kindly like and share this video and subscribe to my channel for more tutorials on analog communication. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.